Now, he's got to serve Laban another seven years. But at least this time, he receives payment up front. Now, should we feel sorry for Jacob when we read this story? I mean, maybe we shouldn't feel too sorry for Jacob because even though from his perspective, it seemed as if everything had turned out unjust and unfair. But this is the part of the love that will not let me go. As the hymn writer of old said, sometimes along this Christian journey, my dear friend, it may not be immediately clear to you that that's good news, that the God who has chosen you will not let you go. Uh, amen. But thanks be to God. Aren't you glad that we have a God who saves to the uttermost all that come unto God by Him, seeing that He ever lives to make intercession for the people of God? I praise His name today. Jacob, and this was all a part of the plan of God, that Jacob would be deceived by somebody close to him. That was necessary. If his repentance for all of his wickedness and all of his scheming was going to be genuine, this needed to happen. God's grace had laid a hold on him and was not going to give up. You see, my dear friend, when you're a child of God, that rough, chiseling work of sanctification will be a process inside of your life. You see, God, in one sense, you're sanctified when you get saved, but in another sense, that process is an ongoing process, and sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's tough. But God is at work in your life if you're saved by the grace of God. And at times it must have seemed as if Jacob and all of his circumstances and problems was an anti-fulfillment of the blessing that God had already given through Abraham and Isaac that you're going to be a multitude of many people. I mean, no doubt Jacob is thinking about everything that's taken place inside of his life and he's saying, seriously, God? I, I mean, really, God? This Jacob is the one who's going to inherit the promised land and through whose multitude of descendants the entire earth is going to be blessed. But by the end of Genesis chapter 29, he has worked his heart out for Laban for 14 years and all he had to show for 14 years of work was two wives that he didn't get along with and two wives that didn't even get along with each other. I'd say that's a problem, wouldn't you? <laughs> but thanks be to God. Aren't you glad that the grace of God is more powerful than we could ever imagine? Amen. Aren't you glad that the grace of God is more powerful than we ever dreamed? Thanks be unto God. I'm glad that we're sin abounded, grace did much more about. Hallelujah. I bless His name today. Amen. When you're in that reality gap, you may not be able to see how it's going to happen, but I can promise you, my dear friend, God's promises shall stand. God's counsel shall stand. God's Word is forever settled in heaven. God's will will prevail. Amen. I praise His name today. The hymn writer said, In how firm a foundation sanctify to you your deepest distress. That's what He does. He will use your most distressing situations and challenging experience to polish you like, like a star, like He wants you to be. Amen. That's what He's done for Jacob. That's what He's doing for Jacob. That's what He'll do for you and, and He'll do for me. And, and in all of this, God will never turn away from His promises to bless us and to sanctify us and to purge or, and, and forge within us a knowledge of our sinful hearts and just how much we need His grace yeah. every moment of our lives. Amen. Well, did Jacob understand all of that at this point in his life? I mean, could he have imagined that all of this was going to work out in the end just as God had promised? Well, we, we don't really know what Jacob was thinking all the time. I mean, the Bible doesn't really give us a great deal of insight as to what was in his heart at this particular moment. But what's interesting about all of this is that in one sense, it doesn't really matter at all. In one sense, it doesn't really make any difference whatsoever. But in another sense, it makes all the difference. In another sense, it matters tremendously. In the terms of Jacob's joy and in the terms of Jacob's peace before God, it made a great deal of difference as to whether or not he was living by faith. If his faith in the promise of God was strong, then what's going to happen in Jacob's life is he's going to have